Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at Schedule M2 and M3 of Form 1120. We already looked at Schedule M1. This topic is covered in, in, in a corporate income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a professional level. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should start a LinkedIn account. You will be able to network with other professionals and grow your connection. If you are a Facebook user, you can like my Facebook page. You surely want to subscribe to my YouTube. Like my videos if you like them, share them, put them in playlist. Thank you very much. Please do so. That's very important for me. I do have a Twitter account and I have a website. On my website, I always try to get you CPA deals. So if you go to my website now, I do have a CPA deal that's from Becker. And this is unprecedented. Right now, Becker, as of today, they have an unlimited access. Becker never, ever had an unlimited access. If you go through my website, you will save $495 on the uh, Becker Unlimited. And you can have it in theory for... Let's talk about Schedule M2. So what is the big idea for Schedule M2? Well, really, if you if you really, if I want to simplify this, Schedule 2 is a statement of retained earnings. Now, do you remember the statement of retained earnings? If not, you you really want to be familiar with it on how to compute the changes in retained earnings. So let's go over this real quick. Hopefully you know this. If not, well, there you go. This is your opportunity to learn it. Remember, we take beginning retained earnings plus net income or minus net loss if we had a lo net, net loss but we're going to be positive we're going to have net income minus dividend and that's going to give you your ending retained earnings so this is basically a simple formula simple but powerful formula that you you should have learned in accounting 101 that you will be using in advanced accounting now what is the irs is looking for yes this is you know, uh, reconciling your beginning retained earning and ending retained earning. What they're really looking for is, remember, sometimes what we do is we make adjustments for retained earning. If you happen to make an adjustment for retained earning, for example, if you adjust beginning retained earning, it means there was either an error, a misapplication of, uh, of, uh, of an accounting rule. So they want to know if there was an adjustment, that's what they're really looking at, but they also want to know the reconciliation. If that adjustment it's going to really lead to any ta uh, taxable income. Okay, so that's what they're looking for. So the, the Schedule M2 will do give them this opportunity to take a look at any adjustment that happened from your end. Now, sometimes they use the term uh, unappropriated retained earning. Unappropriated means not restricted. It means it's not restricted by any internal or external uh, party. Corporation must reconcile retained earnings at the beginning of the year with retained earnings at the end of the year using Schedule M2. I just showed you the formula. I'm going to show you an actual, an actual schedule. Now, bear in mind that not all corporations have to do so. Okay, Schedule L, which is the balance sheet, Schedule M1 and M2 of Form 1120 are not required if you have a gross receipts of less than 250 and assets less than 250. Now you might be asking why? Well, simple, ease of compliance. They don't want to put a burden, burden on small corporation to prepare all these schedules. And frankly, when I was in practice, yeah. Schedule M1, I could do it. Uh, I, I mean, I, I understand how Schedule M1 works. I understand how a balance sheet works. But just for the love of God, I, you don't know why. It just it's sometime it doesn't work as you, as expected. Sometimes it's a software glitch. Sometimes it's uh, something happened from the prior year. If the prior year figures are not accurate, then your figures will not be accurate. If there was any adjustment that you missed, so in the real world, it, it should not be difficult. But in the real world, Schedule M1 in the balance sheet does give some difficulties. And if you're listening to me, maybe you can relate to this. I just want to share my experience when I used to prepare Schedule M1, M2 in the balance sheet because I did prepare them. So for ease of compliance, if you are considered a small company, you don't have to worry about this. And this is what Schedule M2 looks like. And let's just take a look at it. It's basically what I, what I just showed you. It's your balance at the beginning of the year, and they call it analysis of unappropriated. It means unrestricted retained earning. So this for this company, 125,000 plus net income. And this, this gave them 
214,400. Now you could have other increases if there's any adjustments or anything like that, which is we don't have any. Distribution then on the other hand, we're gonna deduct dividend minus the dividend minus you know, if we have stock dividend, property dividend or any other decreases for that matter and gives us ending retained earnings. So simply put, it's 125, the beginning retained earning plus net income minus dividend. You wanna memorize this formula inside out because you will use it in your financial accounting, in your financial accounting, okay? So that's basically schedule M2. Let's take a look at this example to see how it works in an actual example. So let's take a look at this data. We have this here, D company, uh, a calendar year C payer has the following information, net income per books, taxable income, federal income tax per books, cash dividend, and appropriated retained earning as of January 1st. Based on the above information, use Schedule M2. Um, I don't have Schedule M2, so I'm gonna use the numbers. Uh, well, let's first compute it manually, then we'll put the numbers in Schedule M2. So what is your beginning retained earning? This is your beginning and up an appropriated retained earning, $796,010. Then you're gonna add your, add, add your income per books. Your income per books is 386,250 and then you're gonna deduct your dividend 150,000. Now they're giving you these figures to confuse you. Taxable income is taxable income. It has nothing to do with schedule M2. Federal income tax per books, that has to do with schedule M1 if you remember. Okay, they're so just trying to confuse you to see if you really know how to prepare this. So let's go ahead and look at a formula and uh, look at the, use a calculator to compute uh, these figures, 796 and ten dollars plus net income of three eighty six to fifty minus one hundred and fifty thousand. That's one million thirty two thousand two sixty one million thirty two thousand two sixty. So let me show you here what would happen. So basically, what we're looking at here, if you're preparing this on an M two, this will be the uh, seven hundred ninety six thousand ten dollars. This will be net income per books, 386 to 50. And we add those together, whatever the answer will be here, then we'll deduct the dividend, which happens to be 150. And our final answer was 1,032,260, okay? This will be also the total of the deduction, 150,000. So this is basically schedule M2. So let's take a look at Schedule M3. What is Schedule M3? Basically, Schedule M3, what's the big idea? Schedule M3 is really Schedule M1, except that it's an expanded Schedule M1. And you will see, once you look at Schedule M3, which I, I do have a Schedule M3, you will see what I mean. It's like Schedule M1, but much, much more expanded. Now, why do why is M3 required? Just like Schedule M1, we want to know the difference between your taxable income and your book income just if, to see and if there's any large discrepancy. If there's any large discrepancy, we want to know what that discrepancy is. But Schedule M3 became very important after Enron and WordCom because the IRS, they want to know specific details. Now, who have to prepare Schedule M3? Well, guess what? If you're one of the big players, uh, you have total assets of 10 million or more, uh, so corporate taxpayer with total assets of 10 million or more are required to report much greater detail regarding the difference in financial accounting and taxable income, either loss, if it's a loss, the losses, if it's income, it's the income. So this is what we use Schedule M3 for, okay? So it's the, the purpose of Schedule M3 is to increase transparency between corporate financial statement and tax return. So what we're looking at, we're looking at GAAP and we're looking at IRS numbers, and we want to know the difference between those two. Now, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. If you remember, not not lie, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna kind of remind you that if you remember in intermediate accounting, you learned about deferred income taxes. You remember all these items, permanent items, and uh, permanent differences and temporary differences. They will appear on Schedule M3 in details. Like, if you want to prepare Schedule M3, you have to be very familiar with deferred income taxes that that uh, or accounting for income taxes that intermediate accounting chapter. Okay. And by the way, it is on my website, it is on my YouTube channel. It's one of the most popular playlists. So it helps the IRS identify corporations that engage in aggressive tax practices. That's the purpose. The purpose is to see 
uh, something that's unusual um, in there that uh, they, they want to question because somehow it's on your books. So what they're looking for is this. That if we go back to GAP and IRS, and what they're really looking for, they want to look for something. They want to look for an income that's on your books, but somehow it's not here, or a deduction, a deduction uh, that you are using for IRS that you're not really using for GAP. Something to the effect of you are trying to reduce your taxes, aggressive taxes. Okay. So there's three parts for Schedule M3. The first part requires the following information. So we're just going to go over these parts really briefly. Uh, the first part, it's the source of financial net income used in the reconciliation, audited financial statements, prepared financial statements, or the corporation books books and records. So basically what they want, they want your net income per books, really a detailed net income per books. They want to see any restatement of the corporation income statement for the filing period, as well as the restatement for the past five filing period. They want to see if, you have, if you're have you making any adjustments. Why? If you're making any adjustments, any re restatement, they want to kind of see if there's any taxable effect to those adjustments. Any required adjustments, again, to net income, amount referred to previously, okay? So that's what they're looking for. Um, so let me just give you a quick example of what Schedule M3 would involve, just to kind of just give you a feeling. Uh, uh, again, in the real world, I never, I never, when I was in practice, I never prepared a Schedule M3 because I never, we never had a client that large with $10 million of assets. And if we did, I did not work on that client. I heard it's, uh, it's really a challenging schedule. I looked at it, and we're going to look at it. I mean, I, I look at it from an academic perspective. It's pretty straightforward as long as you know your thing. But in the real world, nothing is straightforward. Even a Schedule M1 and M2, they will get a little bit more complicated. So I could only imagine Schedule M3. But that's beside the point. Let's take a look just at an example to see how this whole thing fits together. Uh, Southwest Sportsman Corporation, SSC, sells hunting and fishing equipment. SSC have several several stores in Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona, I guess, in the south. It also has a subsidiary in Mexico, which is organized as a Mexican corporation. Okay. So it's a U.S. company, but they have a subsidiary in Mexico. SSC, which does not would, does not file Form 10-K with the SEC, so it's not publicly traded, report income from its Mexican subsidiary on its audited financial statements, which show net income of 45 million in 2018. So basically, what the, what they do is when they report their audited financial statement, which is GAAP, when they look at their GAAP financial statement, they have net income of 45 million. That's for 2018. The Mexican Corporation, which is not consolidated but by SSC for tax purposes. What does that mean? It means when it comes to tax purposes, they eliminate. They, it's not part of their group. As a result, it's not included. It, as a result, it's not includable corporation for tax purposes, and that that subsidiary has a net income of seven million. So when they prepare their taxes, what's going to happen? They're going to only show okay SS. So basically, for tax purposes, they're going to take forty five minus seven, and that's going to keep them only thirty eight million for tax purposes. Now the IRS wants to know why do you have forty five million for gap, and when it comes to taxes, you are reporting thirty eight. So here's what's going to happen: SSC will enter seven million on part one line 5a on schedule m3 let's take a look at it so part one line 5a so this is schedule uh, m3 this is part one and this is 5a so net income from non-includable foreign entities so here what they would tell the irs is look we deducted seven million because that that is uh, that is income f uh, from a mexican subsidiary and as far as the irs are concerned that income is not taxable for IRS purposes. So this is basically what part one looks like. Now there are other items, but I just want to just give you a feeling of it, like a feeling of this schedule. Let's take a look at part two and part three. Part two, reconcile income and loss items of includable corporation, while part three, reconcile expenses and deduction. And the best way is to look at actual part two and part three. And specifically, we're gonna look at, at, at those parts, but let me just show you. Part three list, 36 reconciling item relating to expenses and deduction. So part three deals with the difference in expenses and deduction. For these items, taxpayer must reconcile differences between income statement, which is income statement is gap, and the return and the tax return amount. Tax return amount is IRS. Uh, column D, 
which is column D, and then classify these differences as temporary, which is column B, or permanent, column C. So basically, we're going to go back to intermediate accounting, to your <laughs> intermediate accounting course, and basically uh, reconcile the items as either temporary or permanent. So let's take a look at part two first, and just maybe we'll look at an example, just to kind of give you a feeling, just to give you a feeling of this. So this is part two, and let me select something this has to do with income and losses okay notice temporary permanent difference this is income per income statement income per tax return so basically what we're looking at is something like this this is i mean this is interesting uh, if you like this stuff this is irs and this is gap so i'm just gonna work quick let me select something that's gonna be easy for you or something you could relate to uh da -da 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 -da. let's see something that I think it will be easy for you. Uh, oh, interest income. Interest income. What do what do we know about interest income? And to be more specific, muni interest income. Just to kind of just to kind of little, make it a little bit more interesting. If we have let's assume ten thousand dollar of interest income, we're going to include this here. We're going to include this. So this ten thousand dollar would appear would be included in, under your gap income. But remember, this is this. Oops. This ten thousand dollar is a permanent difference. It's never taxed. Therefore, it's a. I'm sorry, yeah, it's a permanent difference. So therefore, it's deducted. Okay, now I'm just showing you here to show how it works. So on the tax return, you will not see that ten thousand dollar. So this is just basically showing you a difference. There's there's other things. There's a list of everything that you can think of, and I'm pretty sure there's a category where there's others. Where if it's not here, and there's a difference between the two, tell me the difference. So this is basically an example. For this is income. Uh, for expenses, let me same thing. For expenses, you have uh, gap, you have IRS, and it's either a permanent difference or a temporary difference. Uh, temporary difference would always would deal with depreciation because eventually it will oh it it will reverse. But let's take a look at fines and penalties because this is you should you sh you should know this. Or I hope you should know this. At least you should know this. Fines and penalties. Remember, fines and penalties. When you have fines and penalties, that's okay. You can deduct them. Let's assume you paid a penalty of fifty thousand dollars. Well, for financial accounting purposes, you will deduct the penalty. Well, guess what? You will can never deduct penalties for tax purposes. The Congress doesn't want you to encourage you to break the law. Therefore, you have to take it out. Therefore, you don't see that deduction. And what you have to do for each one of those items and so there's 36 items uh, you have to determine how is it how how is it for how is it being treated for tax purposes versus book purposes look here depreciation and you should be familiar with this for example the depreciation will be a different amount than the depreciation for tax purposes and depreciation generally speaking it's a temporary difference and tell you what the difference is and it's temporary so that's basically what schedule m3 um, again i'm simplifying um, but uh, if any of you ever work on Schedule M3, would like to add anything in the notes, share it with other students, by all means do so. I, I, would, I would greatly appreciate it. But this is basically Schedule M1 and M2 in a nutshell. Uh, if you're studying for your CPA exam, by all means study hard. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Thank you very much and see you on the other side of success. Good luck.